Hello and welcome to Alan Luthery. Welcome to my first video series where we're going through this guitar here, which is my one of my first guitars that I built, and rebuilding it from the ground up, doing it properly. I hope you'll enjoy the whole show. Thanks very much. So first things first with this, strip it down, take all the parts off. Simple enough. And I'm just gonna use a neck rest here as well. I'm just slackening off the strings, first of all, I am just going to cut them off. But you should never cut the strings when they're under full tension, it can be very bad for the neck. I've never actually seen anything bad happen, but I'm not going to chance it. These strings now have been on it for quite a while, I believe these are Ernie Ball Cobalts. But I put these on, God, probably four or five years ago. They're very old, but they still actually, they still play reasonably well for their age. Now, another thing here on the back, I use the wrong ferules for this. So the string ball ends always stuck out. The back of it. which is kind of funny because nowadays I actually, they are more difficult to find than the proper ones that should be there. So while I'm here, I am going to, because I know these are pressed in yeah, quite firmly. I'm going to use a fret pulling, I don't know, pliers, I suppose. See if I can, yeah. Because I am going to be fully refinishing this. I believe I originally did it with Danish oil, which held up reasonably well. Actually, the closer I look at it, it is covered in scratches. This guitar owes me absolutely nothing. I built it quite cheaply and I got a lot of wear out of it. I think one of the first I built this is probably nine years old at least. So this is just an old, I think it's from Screws and just to keep all the parts together. Well, the screws in these guys are mock. And they're actually different screws. This one is a smaller screw than the other one. Actually too small for, these are strap locks. So that looks like a pick guard mounting screw. Interesting choice. Sometimes if you've got a tough screw, I find twisting back and forth, just, and even twisting, just because this screw did not want to move, still doesn't want to move, but by kind of torquing it back and forth like that, it seems to loosen the threads. So this seems to be a classic case of, I did not drill a large enough pilot hole. The neck is still in perfect condition. I always loved this neck. It got quite fat up at the first fret. And I always just loved it. It was one I bought pre-made because 
at this time I didn't have the skills or the confidence to build a neck. Judging by the body, I barely had the skills for that too. best of my knowledge these are very cheap electronics that I have in this so I'm going to be pulling them and replacing them with a full set of um, Bourne's pots and I think it's an Illinois capacitors capacitor good quality stuff what's in it I pretty sure is just muck probably going to replace this and might even enlarge the I will because this is quite rough around here there's actually a chunk missing there and there the router I know I didn't but it looks like I freehanded this with the router switchcraft jack on it at least these guys don't want to come up I usually find putting something like this a credit card works perfectly fine just wiggling it back and forth and spinning the pot and off she pops God, that looks grim underneath these guys very rough it looks I don't know how I managed to drill a hole like this and not get it circular. It's just impressive. And they are quite deep in there. obviously going to do something about that. I may just level this whole bit here. I'm not sure, we'll see how we go. Because this is a nightmare, but there's no other way of doing it. Loosen the nuts with the uh, I suppose the pliers, and then I can get them out by hand. Now I know the the Bourne's pots are ten mil shaft, and these don't look like ten mil. So I think these are imperial pots. Now I'm not even going to unsolder these. I'm just going to clip them nice and short. These pickups are, God, I don't even remember what they are. They were replacements. I had a set of guitar fetish. Humbucker size P90s. They were nice actually, I liked them. For some reason, I wanted to try something different, so I got these guys. They were not expensive. They don't sound great. So I will definitely be replacing them, possibly even with the old, the original 
original GFS ones. Okay, so we had a bit of an issue with the... I'm using my phone to do the video at the moment and for some reason it stopped recording after 10 minutes so I believe I was taking out the electronics. Uh, since then I took out everything else basically. Um, those guys, same thing, I used the fret puller for, to get those ferrules out. These ones I was saying that usually I would use a large bolt that fit the same threads larger than, well I have to have a thicker than the guitar body Usually I would screw them down, they would hit the bottom of the holes here and just drive back the collars, which everything is in the bucket at the moment. These ones I didn't have the proper bolts, so what I did was I got, hopefully you can see that, hands are filthy now, and that is, well, so that is just a threaded insert. I knocked off all the barbs and everything, popped it down, so then when I screwed back in the post, is bottomed out early and screwed back up the same method really it's just the the poor man's way of doing it um removed everything i was saying i'm thinking about putting a uh, black oak veneer on the front and the back of the headstock that was it now i also i don't know that i mentioned it earlier around the edges of the whole guitar were a bit bumpy, a bit lumpy, just not very refined. So I brought it over to my spindle sander and redid the edge the whole way around, the whole profile, and it made a big difference. I'm sure you can see here, there's obviously the difference between the raw wood is whiter and the not, but there's lines that aren't, they don't flow, they're, they're wobbly. Over here is not too bad, not great. This also wasn't 90 degrees. Uh, I did mention in the other recording, which I'm not sure if it's saved. When I made this, I didn't use a router or anything to do the profile. I did it all by hand, probably with a hand orbital sander. So it was not great, really. Um, this is much better with the spindle sander. It holds it at 90 degrees and everything is nicely squared. So what I'm going to do now, before I do anything else, is a good question. Um, I think I'm actually going to make yes instead of all of these are individually recessed and they're all individually recessed quite badly. So what I'm going to do is pencil first off. Just to illustrate I'm going to make a template just basically get something a bit thicker than that probably three quarter inch MDF or something and I'm just going to make a profile that goes well, that doesn't work because of the varnish make a profile that goes approximately like this this is something I do on my druid models that's very, I don't like that contour something like that and then I'll route out all of that surface at all so the whole panel here will be recessed I can see some of these like that's quite thick there um, I don't have I can get the calipers so that whole plate is about eight and a half millimeters thick here I don't need it. I don't need it that much. I need what five mil, really is 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 what I need for yeah for boring spots. It's about five mil. So I'll take that all down so that it's five mil left. I will do that by yeah, as I said. I'll get the three quarter inch MDF or ply or something, plop it there, and then use my table router and a just a straight bit with a template follower on it. So the template follower will follow. The MDF cut out there. On the back, back is a good question. I don't like this at all. I'm not sure if you can see this on the video. There, it looks like router chunk out. I'm not sure exactly. And that's, it's not good. <laughs> it 
basically. So, what I'm going to do, similar story as with the front, I'll get probably three quarter inch MDF or ply, and I'm just going to drop it about there. Get a straight line. And I'll just cut that surface the whole thing and then I will make the straight line will be nice and easy I'll then get another straight piece I actually have panels of ash here so I might use an ash piece that will match in with the body we'll see I might I also have one up here I'm a bit short on that side That might work. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll go with it. Something like that. I think that's the best way to go about this. Just to make it nice. Because while I would currently call it homemade, I want to make it handmade. Very important distinction between those two. Um, now, before that, just while I have it here, I am going to use an Iwasaki saw file just to carve out this bit and this bit even. That's not too bad, but definitely that bit. Actually, some I believe I used a spoke shave to do this originally, and there's some chatter there that I can see. So that's actually rounded the whole way there. So I do always like to mark out where I'm going simply because then I have something to follow. And I can draw on this, it's no problem at all because I'm going to be taking probably 60 grit to this or 80 grit, starting it all from fresh. That's actually fine, I just want to clean it up. Maybe extend it a bit there. So when I route this, I will go over here, and when I put on the new cover, I will carve the cover to match that. It'll be no problem. Now on the top, I also have the starting, I suppose, of an arm contour here. Does start up here. And I definitely want to make this more pronounced. I like arm contours myself. And I quite like them on these round more rounded. This is obviously Les Paul inspired, but a double cut Les Paul. And I like the arm contours on these. Frets are really manky. So I think these should be nice carved lines. I do these all obviously just by eye. I look, I kind of, I've done a, I've done a couple of these. So in my head anyway, I have a reasonable idea of what will look nice, what will work nice too. I like a very carved instrument. I like it to be really just ergonomic, I suppose is the word. Now, so I have the half round. I uh, have the flat Iwasaki. Uh, 
that's just the Narex, Narex, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. That's a half round with a flat on the back. That's a big heavy rasp and then a Shinto saw file. Shinto saw rasp. So these are beautiful and I think everyone really is on this bandwagon at, at the, this stage. They're just, they are fabulous to use. They're basically a load of hacksaw blades arranged in this honeycomb pattern and they eat material. Right, I have the rasp here, the Narex rasp, but realistically I'm going to use the Shinto for all the flats and I might use the round on this just for places like that where it really needs to be roughed out and I can feel there needs quite a bit. In fact, more I think than this is shown. Of course, the big question is, should I do these first? And I think I should just cut them out and then Yeah, because I need to carve this to make it fit in. There's no point doing that after the fact. Okay, 